In my last video, I had a really great encounter with some Osprey and I got a picture I've been trying to get forever. And I went ahead and had it printed on a good size canvas. I just wanted to share that with you. It's really awesome. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about my second day in Costa Rica and I wanted to bring you along for an incredible tropical adventure. Come on, let's check this out. It's five o'clock in the morning and the sun still isn't up, but there are some creatures stirring in the trees above. Listen. somewhat horrifying sound is a troop of howler monkeys and this is how they like to greet the day. They sound like they're a good distance away. <laughs> Except for that one. Okay, let's head back and wait for the sun to rise. Ah, uh, that's much better. A nice colorful mimosa bush filled with hummingbirds. Let's see what we can find. Whoa, look at this little beauty, and it's covered in early morning dew. Let's get some shots. This beautiful little bird is a male rufous-tailed hummingbird, but he's got his face buried deep in that pink mimosa flower, and we can't see it. Ah, now we can see his cute little face. What a cool-looking little bird. And in this shot, you can clearly see where he got his name. Look at that rufous-colored tail, and who could miss that amazing iridescent green color on his throat? This vibrant colored bird doesn't mind chasing away all the other hummingbirds in the area, but he isn't so tough when this large wasp appears on the scene. And I think now's a good time to move to our next location. A nice steady breeze moves in and with it, a soft whispering sound that makes the plants sway back and forth as if they're dancing. A gentle and much welcomed rain is accompanied by the wind and it helps keep the temperatures nice and comfortable. The thick canopy of trees acts like a giant umbrella, keeping everything deep inside the forest nice and dry. Let's go see what we can find. A tiny frog hops onto the scene. Check out those wild colors. They are nature's way of saying stay back because this is a poison granular frog. Its skin is loaded with toxins, but these toxins are only used as a defense against predators. Let's safely take a closer look. Wow, look at this creature. The first and most obvious thing you notice are those colors, but take a closer look at the texture on this frog's skin. It's covered with all sorts of bumps and ridges. This frog is native to Costa Rica and Panama, and sadly, its numbers are declining due to deforestation. But this area is practically crawling with all sorts of frogs, like this one. And yes, I'll be the first to admit, I have no idea what type of frog this is. And look at the plant that it's on. It's just crazy. It's alien-like. My nephew, Zach, simply loves frogs. So Zach, if you're watching, this entire portion of the video is just for you, buddy. And what's this slowly creeping up along the backside of the weirdest looking plant in the world? This is a red-eyed tree frog. And it's pretty obvious how this amazing looking amphibian got its name. My, what big red eyes you have there, little froggy. Those big red eyes help act like a defense mechanism. When the frog senses a predator is near, they open their eyes big and wide. The predator takes one look at those big red eyes and says, yep, that's a little too weird looking for me to eat. And the frog lives another day. All right, let's leave these amphibians alone and see if we can find any reptiles before the rain makes its way through the thick treetops above. Where there are frogs, you will usually find snakes. But this snake isn't interested in any frogs. This is a cloudy, snail-eating snake. Its diet consists of snails and slugs. Let's grab a couple of shots. Luckily, this snake isn't venomous, so we can take a closer look without having to worry about being bitten. This is my first time seeing one of these snakes, and man, what a cool-looking snake it is. I would have guessed it to be venomous from the size of the head, but apparently this snake is only interested in eating snails and slugs. But where there are little snakes, there are often big snakes like this one. This is the highly venomous Fertilance Viper, a snake that some consider to be the most dangerous snake in the entire Western Hemisphere. Some even call this snake the ultimate pit viper 
because it has no problems defending itself against any threat. I'm filming and photographing the snake using my 500 millimeter lens, and I'm keeping a distance of about 25 feet or eight meters. Thankfully, the Nikon D850 has a good high resolution sensor, which will allow us to get a closer look without actually getting close. Now we can safely take a very close look at the snake and check out those eyes and take note of the shape of its pupils. Those cat-like eyes are one indicator that the snake is venomous. And I don't ever suggest getting close enough to a snake's eyes to try and determine whether or not it is venomous. The other obvious clue that this snake is venomous is the shape of its head. Venomous snakes have a large arrow-shaped head, and again, you really shouldn't ever be getting this close to a snake to find out whether or not it's venomous. Thanks to modern technology, we can all get a close look safely. It's amazing how well this snake blends in with its environment, but this snake's camouflage is nothing compared to this one's. Oh. My. God. Talk about chilling. This snake is the craziest looking snake I have ever seen, and it looks like the rain has made its way through the trees. A few water drops will make this photo shoot even better. Based on what I said before, do you think this snake is venomous? You bet it is. You can clearly see the venom glands on this snake right here and here. Those venom glands are connected to the snake's fangs, and when the snake bites, they pump venom through the fangs and into the bite area. Let's take a closer look at the eye. Yeah, you can clearly see the cat-like eye, yet another indicator that this snake is venomous. But what kind of snake is it? Those little scales above the eye that look like cute little eyelashes? They're the giveaway. This snake is an eyelash viper, and what a wild-looking viper it is. Alright, enough of the reptiles and amphibians. There are other creatures here who have enjoyed the recent rain, like this beautiful male Rufus Hummingbird. But man, wow, this bird is so fast. Let's slow things down a bit. That's much better, and it looks like this bird is very cooperative. Let's get some shots. Now that's a close-up. What a beautiful little bird. And look at that tiny drop of water on its head. Let's see the other side. Awesome. This view looks just as good as the other. A little more tail feathers in this shot. And check out that beak. I would have never guessed it opened like that. We've got to see the underside of that beak. And in case you've ever wondered what a rufous-tailed hummingbird's tongue looks like, here's a shot of just its tongue in perfect focus. Well, yeah, that's kind of weird, but you never know when you might need a shot of a hummingbird's tongue. And while we're at it, let's add to the weirdness with this totally strange pose. All right, nice photo shoot, little bird, but let's see if we can get a few action shots. And it's time for our male rufous-tailed hummingbird to refuel on some tasty nectar, but not before speeding away to another flower a few feet away. I knew Costa Rica and all of its amazing wildlife might be filled with some amazing vibrant colors, but I wasn't prepared for what happened next. My guide quickly jumped up and ran towards a tree, pointing and calling my name the entire way. I aim my lens at the treetops and focus on a shimmering blue light. This is the turquoise cotinga, a bird that rarely makes an appearance in this location. Let's grab a few shots. Like most birds, the male turquoise cotinga has all the color, from that soft purple color on his chest to that metallic blue color on his back. What an amazing bird. And there's his girlfriend sitting in the tree just below him. We still have a few hours of light left. Let's head back to the resort and see if we can't find a few more birds. On the way back, my guide spots this bird, a laughing falcon, who is intently staring at something down below. What could it be? I see some feathers there, but wow, this is one tall bird. Oh, it's a tiger heron. And now it's looking right at me. <laughs> what a crazy looking bird. All right, time to move on. Whoa, look at this amazing bird. This is a red-legged honey creeper. And what a crazy looking bird it is. Let's get some shots so we can see this beauty a little closer. Ah, now we can see things a little better. And it's pretty easy to see where this bird got its name. Check out those wild looking red legs. But that cute little face topped off with a baby blue crest is what really draws me in. Undeniably beautiful, but we have one more little cutie to check out. This beautiful little bird is a golden hooded tanager, yet another incredibly colorful and vibrant bird that is quite common in Costa Rica. 
a rich and diverse land overflowing with amazing wildlife and color. What an amazing way to end my second day in Costa Rica. Never a dull moment in the vibrant country of Costa Rica that's just overflowing with color and wildlife. I have a few spots left on my Costa Rica workshop for later this year. If you want to join me, there's a link in the description below. And as usual, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. If you had a favorite part, let me know in the comment section below. And until next time, I'll see you later.